being 6 p.m. Call the meeting of the Conway Select Board Monday, August 14th, 2023, to order. Um, first item, vote to approve the minutes of July 31st. Uh, move to approve those minutes. They look fine to me. Yep. Me too. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Um, since we have uh, several members of the public, I don't know. You, oh, you're here because for the you're, you're the new Deb. You're here for the MWTP designation, correct? All right. Um, but Lori Block is here for public comment, and so if it's okay with everybody, we can skip to the first item on unfinished business, um, which is going to be an item on our unfinished business for the foreseeable future. And I'll read it out because it covers sort of this is the best way I could really describe everything. Discussion regarding the July 2023 rain events on this on steps town is taking to remediate town damages, obtain town compensation, alleviate and address resident concerns, remediate town infrastructure which worsen flood damages, assist private individuals and nonprofits in remediating damages and obtaining compensation for losses to private residences and property. So that kind of is the global, all-encompassing statement of destruction that we have all incurred. Um, and um, so, I, you know, that's, I can sort of merge that with public comment. And, public comments. And, um, and I do have something to say. I did meet with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service um, parked right outside your house today. Or, um, about, well, it's about 12 o'clock or so. And we walked all around. I know, I tried calling. Um, um, we walked all around that area. And there's, but go ahead. Uh, is George coming? Because George um, Forcier was also supposed to be here. He said he was. He, yeah, he mentioned it, yeah. Um, if you want to wait just a little sure, bit and sure. um, include both of us, I yeah, think yeah. that would be uh, all right. wise. All right. But, but that, um, I do think that a walk around with people who lived on that area for a long time and understand it um, uh, from the underground up <laughs> might be useful. Agree. We did. We did go up Pine Hill. We went out Upper Baptist. We went walked down the slope to my backyard. Um, as much as we could of it. So do some other business okay. until George. Like, All right. Give him a half hour. So first, we go uh, do unless he shows up on your um, Zoom as a secret okay, yeah. self. Um, <laughs> Double life. <laughs> I found out why Conway. I was looking at Conway, New Hampshire. So Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah. There is more, there's more than one Conway. Yeah. Here, but only one of us has hats. <laughs> Alright, well um, I'll skip ahead since since Deb is here. Um, this was I thought this was an excellent recruit. Um, good job, Janet, for convincing Deb to do this. Um, but uh, um, the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership rep has been um, that seat has been open since Beth um, Gershman, who was our original delegate when that was created uh, and did so much good work for it and got the town a lot of good stuff and, um, and did a lot of good work. And so um, we have, we have a, a recommendation um, that Deb Donaldson, um, who is like really impressive, um, is um, be appointed to serve as a member of the Woodland Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership for a term eight ending August 14th, 2026. That's a full three year hitch. Okay. That's, that's the maximum that we can sentence you to. Uh, otherwise, it would be longer than that otherwise. Uh, um, Is that a motion? Yeah, so that's, that's the motion. Um, I second that. I really appreciate Deb's um, participation in this. And, and uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And so whenever there's anything good, you know, Beth used to come before us one, you know, one, a couple times a year, because um, there was always some 
good choice points and things to decide on. There's grant programs every year, all that, and there's a whole lot of really neat things that that group does. I support it Great. 100%. Um, and some very, very smart people that are involved in that group too, that are head, the in, head of it, and um, with Hank Art, who I, who I think is, like, uh, I guess he was, he was the chair of the environmental science at Williams College, now he's at UMass. Um, uh, he's, he's very impressive too, so I, I, yeah. so do, you'll do great. So this was a good recruit. So you are officially um, appointed. Yeah, you're appointed. Thank you, Deb. Thank Thanks, you Deb. Thank you for your service. Right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, back to back to public comment and unfinished business. One and the same. Um, since George Forcier is now joining us. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, um, so this is the discussion on all things flood related and especially, I would assume, that, uh, with a focus on the Pine Hill, Upper Baptist Hill, River Street uh, axis of destruction. Right. So, shall I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, mostly I'm asked to, well, to come here and thanks for squeezing me into your agenda. Um, we've met Lori already and Lori and I are sort of uh, both involved in the issues up on, on Baptist Hill. Uh, first question I had really was I wanted to make sure you all got the letter we sent and had a chance to read it and get it. Um, and then the corollary to that is, is there anything that uh, we can amplify or clarify about our observations uh, of how the municipal stormwater system up there seems to have failed uh, ahead of the storm, but obviously really obvious during the storm. Uh, that's, so that's the question for you guys. Is there anything we can amplify or clarify about what we said in the letter? Uh, help better understand what's going on up there. I think a walk around would be nice, like you, we were saying. We were saying. Yeah. I would love to see. Uh, I walk that area all the time. I just would like to see where, where exactly you, um, you're referring to in the letter. Um, well, anytime you guys want to go up there, make sure the lawyer can or I'd be happy to show you. I uh, did give Veronique a request um, a more a modified version of what you got in the letter, but also a kind of homemade map showing the water flows that we experienced during the storm. Because uh, she wanted to send it on to uh, I think it was Nemo, perhaps. Um, so there's that's floating around somewhere, but I, uh, I can send you copies of that, or you can just come up and you can block it, which might be even better. Uh, yeah. Um, can Can I ask you a question? Have course. you all seen what what George sent? Yes. yes. Have you sent, seen the what pictures I, are unforget uh, unforgettable? Are you, have you seen what I sent, which, which was a different um, uh, photo display? His wasn't photos. Mine. Well, I he saw, had a few. Yeah, yeah, I saw the pictures. Same, yeah. Okay, and did you all look at Donna's? She um, lives behind. I know um, they went to. Right. Yeah, Don, she, I yeah. saw. I saw. Donna Gilman. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah. I saw okay. some. Some. I don't know how many she sent. I saw two or three. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just making sure that that it actually got distributed in that way. But yeah, anytime you all wanted to individually or as a group come up, I'm sure we'd be happy to point things out so you have. Granular appreciation of what's going on, what's not going on out there. Yeah. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a real problem. And when you when you chart the town's residential losses, there's a it's a there's a cluster there, and that's not like there the the town is geared up to attend to traveling needs of the motoring public. Um, and private property and drainage and engineering things like that is just not, we don't have municipal engineers. We don't have, and, and, um, and, and so it's like trying to find out what we can do as a town. Um, I'm really still focusing on getting in touch with those agencies and groups that can help us without us incurring costs. Um, and I was looking for the confirmation from the person that I met with today because they're coming back Friday with, with engineers. With, with that person, 
who I think is probably that's the conservation service. Yes. Uh, U.S. conservation Natural service. Natural resources which, and they do service. have a variety of funds available. Yes. The conservation service has landowner partnerships. Yes. Um, so that if landowners give permission, conservation service participates. Yes. And I think that um, having us part be in that group would help a great deal. Yes. There's a study from the 70s of the backfield in my house that shows where what the subsurface is about. 18 inches below the surface is hard pan. Um, I would say that the water table has risen progressively in the 40 years that I've lived there, but it's also shifted its flow related to blocked culverts and um, the density of the rain. Equal, they're equal issues. Um, and one of the things that I'd like to see is some short-term mitigation solutions and the long-term mitigation solutions. Because there are some really simple short-term things that could be done that are sensible, like um, straw bottles to direct water, uh, sandbags to direct water, digging the basin so that it doesn't throw the water um, into the northeast corner so that it actually drains water before it throws it out of the basin. Um, th those are not complicated solutions. Those are pretty simple and, and cost-effective things that could be done. And there's a variety of funding sources. There's FERCOG money, there's conservation department money, there's transportation department money that's all in the state conservation is the feds. It occurred to me that you could go to the extension service for help um, in partnership with the landowners on Baptist upper and lower for uh, help, that there are also, even in private philanthropy, different kinds of resilience funding sources related to uh, climate change and rural life. So has anybody been to the Western Mass Community Foundation? I'm pretty sure Bernie has. I mean, I know that we've- Did we've you get that question, Bernie? Sorry, uh, no, I have not been to Western Mass Community Foundation. Well, I would think that, that Western Mass Community Foundation might, I have no idea, but it very well might have donors that deal with climate change and climate resilience. And if there could be offered, uh, well, first it's to find out if there are any donors, direct donors that deal with that topic would be a useful thing to know in Franklin County. And then two, if there are, is there a matching requirement that might be needed or would somebody, would Western Mass Community Foundation be willing to help partner in developing uh, a match in order to go after other kinds of funding that might require that type of match that maybe the towns um, fairly sizable uh, financial uh, responsibilities can't easily be met out of the village's um, known budget resources. But, but those are like, those are real potential helpers in a situation like this. And if they can't help, well then you just cross it off the list. But there's no reason not to ask. Vermont Mutual Insurance Company, which I know covers at least three people that I know in town has already put a million dollars into the Vermont um, Disaster Fund for, it's divided between the um, uh, Montpelier Community Foundation, Vermont Community Foundation, and another one. And they distribute the fund, like it's not the insurance company that's distributing the funds, but there's different kinds of ways to make resources that are not typically thought of as part of a town's budget available for different resources. I know I looked up the Historic Preservation Community, the Mass Commission for Historic Preservation. There is funding for property improvement related to resilience of the property and that pot. And, but, you know, most people, most people wouldn't know how to do that kind of development 
and they would need a central communication resource in town to be able to, to find out about it. And even when I went into the town hall just to find out, town office rather, to find out whether or not we were officially in the national flood insurance plan and what was that footprint, I couldn't get an answer. Even though, and I couldn't figure it out from the planning board um, paragraph that's dedicated to this. And when you go to the flood insurance site, the town of Conway is not listed. We have, six, home, we have six homes that participate in that that are on the flood. Well, the, we should be in it. The flood, <laughs> the, the flood plan I is mean, the flood plan. The flood <laughs> the, the, my understanding of that is that FEMA determines what who is in the flood plain, mm -hmm. and we only have six homes in the flood plain in this town. In, in Vermont, there's a very vigorous debate going on about the fact that the FEMA definitions for flood do not apply to mountainous territories. So I think that you know we should participate in that dialogue as a hill town. Maybe the whole hill town region should participate that way because this kind of rain is not going to ebb. It's going to continue. I have to take a couple steps back. I mean, Lori is Get deep Big into the weeds of, of these, these no, that's great. ideas. Um, I tend to take more broad stroke, broad brush strokes. Um, one, we wanted to make sure that you're aware that there's a lot of water and baptist soil not being dealt with by the broken management system, and it's ending up, I feel, in your basement. It's in my basement. Well, yeah, all the way down. Yeah. It hits everybody all the way down. <laughs> yeah, and, right. and in my case, it, it doesn't get so much in my basement, but it just kind of floods my, my yards. Um, so that there's that. And then I guess we're hoping that while you have lots of roads you need to restore to get ambulances to people's houses, and that's a priority. We don't want our situation to sort of get lost in the shuffle. Um, and so that's why Lori was talking about short term sort of immediate mitigation. So when the big storm comes again, in the next three to five years, uh, while we're waiting for some of these bigger picture fixes, um, that there's a plan, you know, whether it's sandbagging uh, Baptist Hill Road or something, I'm not sure what it is, but the, you know, you think there might be some short-term fix. But right now, unfortunately, I think the only thing that the highway guys know to do when this happens, in the past at least, is to go to uh, a catch basin next to Donna's house with a right. long pole and try to get the leaves out of it. You know, right. It's just so way beyond that. It's just right. not flappable. Yeah. Um, you know, they'd better they'd be better spending their time throwing some sandbags down and redirecting the water somewhere. Um, and then there's the long term picture. And then I think this yeah. is the kind of things you're talking about more. But there's hopefully MEMA and FEMA and the State Department of Transportation and people that sort of traditional big government helpers uh, will come up with fixes for us, uh, not just on Baptist Hill but throughout the town. Um, but there may be other But I think it's important to think beyond, think about. beyond the, the, the uh, departments of transportation. It's going to be really important to think beyond the departments of transportation. So, but, uh, and, and I guess we're just sort of offering our help. You know, Lori's very good at finding funding sources. That's what she does uh, in, in her other life. Um, so I think that's the basic message we yeah. want to put across today. Uh, yeah. And hope that, that uh, yeah, three to five years from now, we'll have all kinds of government or private foundation intervention that'll fix the problems on top of our hill as well as elsewhere in the, in the town. But I don't think it has to take that long because I've been looking at the deadlines for this stuff. And I think that there are, um, there's short term, not necessarily high budget uh, goals that could be met that can be funded by odd combinations of things. And I'm sure that there are other parts of, we only know the geology and the water courses where we are. I'm sure that other sections of town probably have related problems. Our, our, where our stuff ends up is in people's houses. More so than just yeah. destroying yeah. the road, and, that, and we are that that section of town is unique in that that it's sort of like a triple triple layer sandwich of you know from Pine Hill to Upper Baptist to Road to River Street. It's all the same 
It's all the same uh, water. The same, uh, the same water droplet that goes down the ridge in Pine Hill. So yeah. that's our pitch. I guess we have to get your reactions to that. Um, and one, one final thought I have is that I'm thinking we're going to rename Baptist Hill River Street <laughs> and just make it one big area, this River Hill, I don't yeah. know. River Hill would be good. Yeah, that's, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm up for doing anything that could possibly conceivably be effective in any way. Um, just, you know, I, it's okay to try and fail, too. Like, um, we did. We we we've gotten dialogue started with all kinds of agencies. MassDOT is helping the town a lot. MassDOT, the stream behind the four houses in River Street, the post office, and then the four houses, the fourteen. Well, that's our stream. Yes. It's not just their stream. Yes, it's it, our it stream. goes down and then <laughs> it, it cuts over. Um, so that uh, MassDOT is. Um, that the engineer, the regional engineer or district engineer, Dave Smith from Pittsfield came out. First he said no, then he saw that was Friday morning the 21st. Then Friday evening he saw the videos of the water coming down that stream and out into the road and that, um, that MassDOT only engineers things that for, uh, is only responsible for the water on the road surface, but once he saw as that once he saw how much water was coming out of that onto the road surface, they came back the next week in a caravan of engineers from MassDOT, and they're going to be taking a look at the engineering of that stream and what can be done to stop the amount of water going into that stream and then into the road. Um, so do they coordinate with the conservation service? They don't coordinate. They do their own thing, as far as I know. But the town would be in a position to know and be able to coordinate. Um, and and we've also, I mean, we've had these climate resiliency grants to study the floodplain because the last major flooding issue that we had was like when the South River overflowed during mm -hmm. Hurricane Irene. Um, but I mean, this is like, I I think we could legitimately pursue additional grants and funding for, you know, like climate situations that are not specifically about the South River, but just about like, you know, this. Like we're not in a floodplain generally, but we're in some kind of pocket where we've had yeah. a tornado. <laughs> we have had yeah. like massive, massive floods in the space of ten years. So I think when we look at like like we can't just look at like the South River floodplain as far as like. I think you have to understand the South River floodplain as having water coming from beyond just water falling into the right. into the river. I read that and when I was watching my, I stayed up most of the night in order to um, monitor the rising water in my basement. And on that night I read the floodplain mitigation plan and it didn't look at anything where George and I live. Right, and exactly. The water that George, uh, that goes through George's property ends up going um, in to the, um, near Emerson Hollow. And the water that right. goes through my property ends up on River Street. Right, and that's my point, is that like, that was like our first big like, climate event that we, that we were like, oh my God, it's like the South River that we have to like, plan for. But I think now, like, it's clear that we have to anticipate, it's not just gonna be the river, Kind of issues. Happily, in, in this case, I suspect that the, the um, fix is not so global that you yeah. can solve global warming. You know, in yeah. our case, the fix is some storm drains that aren't working that would carry away some of the water of a hurricane, at least, if not all of it, and take away water from a moderate rainfall as it was designed to do originally. So, happily, I don't think we're talking about something super complex. Yeah. Or, or right. No. I, yeah. But I'm saying. But, but like. I mean. If if we consider this, this is part of like. I mean. There could be funding for this. We could, we, we yeah. had plenty of funding for like, South River remediation. So, we could. It's certainly a piece of that. We're tied yeah. into the river, obviously. Yeah. And that's the, where all the water's going to go. Regardless. That's where the water's going. Exactly. Going. It's, it's one way or the other. It's getting to the South River. And it's an ecological system that that, that's what sort of t struck me as odd about it, the flood plan is. 
it, it didn't take the ecology of the river into right. um, consideration. Not that it, it was not helpful, but it would have been really um, quite valuable to know um, why, for example, at that Emerson Hollow overflow, it, it happens right there so much. It's not, there's a, it's not just a curve. It has to do with what's going on up on Pine Hill and how that drains. And um, so in earlier today, I met with Liz Herzig, the conservationist, um, who's going to be bringing back engineers hopefully Friday. For, she's from the uh, USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, and they specialize in your drainage and erosion. They do not build culverts. No, they do green infrastructure. That's correct. They're big on swales and ditches. I'm for swales. I'm, I'm all for swales too. <laughs> and I think another way to think about what we're asking of, about is it would direct the water that comes down to River Street into known areas, not the wrong areas, but known mitigated areas. Because it, it has um, migrated hugely in the last, since Irene. I would say it began before that, but um, since Irene, the, the migration has been really notable. And um, in the course of the last 10 years, we've taken 15 trees out of our property because of water damage. And, and I just got another report from Woody Lanou, and there's another three to five that could come that need attention. Again, it's water damage. I mean, that's the volume of rain. That's the forest that's happening. But you can also quite literally, the, re the reason I kind of contract the migration of the water is I know when the pines that are no longer there begin to have pools of water beneath them. And they didn't used to when we first moved there in 1984. Yeah, I, think, so, I think you get yeah, the idea. Yeah. So like, yeah. this, this is a, a, a huge focus for the town, for me personally, because this is the, cent the, the epicenter of um, where, where people's homes were damaged. And we can't have a section of town that has uninhabitable homes because the, we're not willing to go the extra mile to figure stuff out. Yeah, and I would, I would personally, selfishly argue that if swales are the answer, the swales shouldn't be my front yard and backyard. <laughs> So but they could, some other place. But yes, a swale right. could go in my back field. And that's Easy. and that's that's the one thing that the state engineers did talk about that when when they saw the video of the, the how fast the water was moving, they're like you have to slow that water down. And that's what that's what swale, that's what walls. swales do. But that's I know that's the engineering goal of this thing is to slow the water down, and they do zigzag stuff. Well, but also who would have I mean. Who would have thought we'd get eight inches of water in one hour? And so that's where I just like, I mean, it, it may not happen again for another like five years, but no. I, that, that, like, but we do, we, like, we need to prepare for like 10 inches of water. But, but I would argue that, that you know, the we, basements on River Street may not fill up every time there's a heavy rain. Yeah. But I see a river in my front and backyard every time there's now a heavy rain. It doesn't, it yeah, we see even, yeah. It takes so 10 ten. minutes to fill up the, the triangle because there's nowhere for the water to go anymore. So 10 minutes after a heavy rain, it fills, and then it starts looking for some place to go. Yeah, and, and so like our, like the roads in town were like built and engineered, you know, for- For a different water. water. For, for a different, different, for, you know. Yeah, but like it's not even doing what it was designed and used to do. Yeah, like so. The, the culverts, right. the drainage up there is not doing anything at present. They're all just clogged up. Yeah, and, and so that water comes down and it used to go underground someplace. And, and in, except during hurricane when the, the overflows in that system would put water in my front yard. I, I could deal with that once, you know, a hurricane. Uh, but now you just get a heavy rain and the water is going across her yard, across my yard, and down to Bill's house. And so um, you, don't, rain. you don't need a, a once in 10 yeah. year hurricane. So anymore. really, so anytime the rain, the rain is more than 1.5 inches per hour, which is a kind of regular, heavy rainstorm now, and then when it climbs above two inches per hour, um, that basin fills very, very rapidly and creates 
Um, I can predict that if it's at 1.5 to 2 inches per hour within 8 hours, there's water sheeting in my basement now. It didn't used to, but now that's what yeah. the prediction and is. On my Any side rainstorm. Road, it splits, and half of it runs <laughs> to my yard, and the other half goes down Baptist Hill. So how, do we know how, but like, it doesn't require a hurricane. It's it, it, it doesn't require a hurricane. It's because there's no, 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 clay no, across yeah, the sequence. I mean, I don't know, it's just interesting to me that like, like in the past like five, ten years, like it's, it used to be like this. Well, no, the, no, no. Rain, the rain volume and density has increased right. steadily in the last ten years. But the system that but was the, in place like, no longer you, works. I yeah. didn't let her try to point out that Ron, I told Ron about this two years ago or, or so, and he came over with some industrial size rotor rooter and tried to open the drain and fail. It just wouldn't work. And so now that now the water doesn't drain off Baptist Hill the way it was in the past. He did open the out outflow so that more water flows into my property and into his <laughs> property. Okay. That but was what the result like about of the it's it, like just go to the basin. It's higher on the west side lower on the east side. The east side puts it into the outflow on my property and his property. It doesn't drain into the back field. The system has failed. There was it's failed. Okay, so it's, a so it's, like, it's, and it's, it's kind like of an like engineering like, issue. And, and, I, saw, and like I, saw, I saw when the potholes, there, there's like a, that there's just like almost the same pothole repeatedly right in front of the mailboxes. There. Oh, sure. Right, that's and, where it got, that's and, where it got cleared out. And, that's, and that's, you look down and it looks like a sinkhole that wants to form. Yes, it's, it's, and that's yeah, that's exactly. It has nowhere to go, so it's eating away under the road. It's run, but mostly running on the surface now. It runs in front of my house. So Ron's not an engineer. Who put these culverts in in the first place? Like, oh, it's quite complex. Even, yeah, it's I know. Because there's it's 19th century culverts. There's a 19th century path path to the road. The more modern culverts are all blocked. There's a brand new culvert on Pine Hill that runs from the Hardy property to his property that's blocked on both sides right now full of silt and when they cleared the road uh, of the gravel after this last storm. And I would describe this storm not just as the 21st. The storm really was yeah, more like a monsoon a month, rain yeah. and it went from the 10th to the 24th. Yeah. And anyway, when they cleared that culvert the, um, on his property, it's blocked on both sides. And then when they cleared the gravel, it blocks the access to the culvert even more. So it's, it's just, you know, there's a culvert on the very far west side of the backfield of my house. I can't even tell you where the origin of it is. I asked um, old time highway department people, where was the, where's the origin to this um, culvert? Like, where does the water come in? It doesn't have a lot of water coming out. But I don't even know where it comes in. And it probably is somewhere near the old Hardy driveway but you would have to dig out all of the brush that's there to maybe find it. I honestly really don't know where it is. Yeah, but we're probably getting into the yeah, weeds. But, yeah, but, but that's part the of what- The system is broken, it doesn't work. What, if, what used to work, as I said in the letter, when I moved here 40 years ago, um, I didn't have water in my front yard when it rained. And I accept Hurricane Irene and maybe one hurricane before that. Um, and that was because the overflow in your dry, dry well is designed to take overflow that the system couldn't handle anymore, like in a hurricane, and dump it in my yard. But now the system's totally failed, and the water just fills up the triangle and finds a home. And it goes one way down Emerson Hollow uh, to the river, and it goes the other way uh, yeah. down her ravine to your house. Well, it doesn't go down the ravine. Well, it goes down all over my, the place yeah. now. Right yeah. now, like, my house is an island. It's everywhere. Mine too. Mine too. So yeah. whatever you guys do going forward, long term, short term, we need to re-engineer the little system. Something has to happen up there, please, because I can't use my yard anymore. Just I, I should correct that. For the first time in six weeks um, yesterday, I was able to mow the back uh, without. I mean, I was able to mow because the, otherwise my mower just sinks in the mud. Uh, that was the first time in six weeks uh, that I could actually use my backyard. And so I just wonder if there's, I mean, with all the climate resiliency grants, grants that we've gotten, like, I mean, if there's, like, you're saying this is not like a climate thing. This is, well, this is, is a climate, climate thing. Exactly right, right, okay, but I, yeah, so I'm just, I'm like, this is a climate thing. I mean, like, like we're, we're very focused on, like, the floodplain, but, like, if we can, the, the, you know, yeah, yeah. like, if, like, if, make if, a case that it's not just, like, 
if the, the system South River, that, that it's existed, the whole, it's, it's, it's the whole drainage system for the, you know, the town of Conway. I mean, it's like when we get bad rain. Like I'm not an engineer and I don't play one on TV. Exactly. But, so, but we need my, one. My sense is if you restore the, the system that was there 40 years ago, because it's now broken, clogged up, and not functional. But if you restored that and put in bigger pipes, I'm just, you know, I don't think we'd have this conversation. Because all the water would be put someplace in the river. You might be talking about flooding in the river because all the water ends up in the river one way or the other. Yeah. But, um, but Baptist Hill dumping water in places people don't want it would not be happening. But even restoring what existed previously and worked would take a huge amount of water during routine heavy storms and half of what uh, Irene and other events dumps on us. But you should restore it with an eye to the future with larger culverts. Great. Um, but that then requires being prepared to receive that on the lower end down here. So, anyway, that's I also happens. think that there's an emergency management issue. And that's related to the, this is a different thing than, than the environmental mitigation. Um, almost everybody on our hill is over the age of 55. And it becomes a health and safety issue in your arguments of pretty significant of significance. And there isn't anybody, I, I talked to Adam briefly about this, there isn't anybody that's easily called upon because everybody's working on the problems, but to do things like help haul a sand, like I bought a whole bunch of sandbags. Can I lift a sandbag? Not to save your life. Um, you know, is there any, is there a way to design uh, uh, emergency management resource team where there, if there, when there are short-term jobs that need to be done that are really related to emergency health and safety, that there are folks you can appeal to. I would think that it's not impossible to organize a volunteer service. It's not, their firemen are totally busy in... No, in no, but the auxiliary, the auxiliary. I'm That's thinking okay. UMass students at Con and well, HCC yeah. students and VOC uh, school students and high school students and so that there are known teams that you, and that there's a communication structure to access because the cleanup, I mean, the cleanup is ongoing. This is, this is actually something that the fire department themselves asked for, whether they could get granted a supply of uh, sandbags on pallets mm -hmm. to deploy. Because they, as part of, when, when they do decide to do flood mitigation or take flood uh -huh. waters out of people's basements, um, they, they were looking for ways to keep the water from entering those basements. Or the ones um, across the street. <laughs> right, right. And, um, and, and they were doing, like, on the spot, um, water channel deviations and all this stuff. And um, they did some kind of impressive little things. But that is actually um, is something that they perceive as their daily work. So if, but it still could benefit from some kind, and I would think that we're not the only town, regional volunteer emergency management service to help do these kinds of really like on, like, you know, on the spot, like you got to bag, you got to help sandbag, you know, uh, you got to help throw the swale, not the swale, the, the waddle down that's 25 yards long, right. um, and not one person can lift it, you know, and you don't have a machine. You have to do it in an emergency fast. Is there a way to build a team like that beyond the fire department? Because the fire department has to come cover a huge geography here. So right, the, and, and that yeah. on your, think about. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's an emergency, it's a different thing than the environmental mitigation. It's an emergency management strategy. And even our, our, our fire department juniors that we used to call, we used to have like very many, and we could call upon them for. We, we have this, this, the size of our fire department is the envy of all of our. I know, and it's, but, um, but, but it's still dwindling. Which but is they, you know, we did the, uh, even at peak flood thing, currently the fire department needed help. We, you know, yeah. we, we have mutual aid, South Deerfield was here, Ashfield was here, um, what's the other fire department? Waitley was here. Waitley, yeah. Waitley, we did out, we dug out the, um, one of the culverts on Baptist, Upper Baptist. Right. 
south of your good pumps, my next door neighbor, Conway, because Conway, both trucks were busy in my house. Um, um, but the, so uh, how do we get to work, you to keep working? The, the, because you, you, I see, I see, I see those notes. <laughs> and and um, like, do you? Can we? How would you like a title? Well, I give, would, I uh, give spe Bernie, special advisor to the select board on flood. Well, I'd flooding. like to walk with the conservation people, and I when you come. But but the, like you can't just arrive. You gotta let me know what time you're gonna be there. Yeah. Well, I, I knew that. that I knew that they were that one person was coming. Um, I I just. But I knew that, that she was not an engineer or had anything to do with like the work that would actually get done. So I didn't I, I didn't think um, once I found out who I was meeting with that there would be a desire to go and see anything. Okay. But um, but she wanted to take pictures and everything, so she walked all around there and took pictures and stuff. Um, and I tried to narrate as best I could. Uh, but um, it was clear that we're going to have to have that same discussion. With the actual professionals that. Well, I'd be members. glad to join that that group, and I bet you that George would as well. But. But um, that's also. But it sounds just like you you feel like the whole more. storm drain system needs to be re-engineered. I don't know if it needs to be re-engineered. It, it needs to be, like, to be brought up to any right. kind well, of like working order. Right. Well, like needs to look at it and like yeah, figure it's out it's like. Broken. And so no water's right. being Right. Yeah. So. And, and the, the basin definitely, I would say, the basin the needs, the, ba the block culverts need to be addressed. Right. Right. Whether or not they need to be, they need to be larger, they need to be um, open, and they need to be filtered from, uh, like, you, like I, you can buy, and it's done in large sites, there are filters that can go over the fronts of culverts to reduce the volume of silt and gravel that it's build up on that build, it's the same right. thing as like putting your sump pump into a bin that's got mesh right. around it so that the sump pump doesn't clog and block. Um, but that type of um, I don't know if that's engineering or just practical. <laughs> or just I mean it needs to be like someone's gotta go. Somebody has that work needs that. to be done. And, and, and and because because our governor never did declare a disaster for us. Um, we, the, the, our legislators are saying to us that we will be getting an appropriation from the state house in a special act of legislation along with Deerfield and a few other towns. Um, and then do your best to include some money for, for and fixing yeah. and stormwater and management on top of the hill, and then you'll have less of a problem. And that's, but that's up to us to put numbers on those things too. They, they don't. We, and, we, and like right now, the, our our damage estimate is three point nine million. Um, Has anybody done a walk through town for every neighborhood for where every culvert is so that they're entirely mapped? Um, Can actually, I answer that? Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> well, the first thing I wanted to say about that is that it's very difficult. I know that. Um, there had been a uh, walkthrough of Deerfield, and just recently they found three they didn't even know that they had. Um, so I, I can check with the first hub. We do have a lot of information from them um, about, for instance, high risk screen crossings and that kind of thing. But I have to tell you, everybody is feeling the same way you are right now, which is that this flooding event has opened our eyes to a lot of different issues that need to be addressed. Um, and actually, if I may, I just wanted to say, um, uh, George and Lori, so what I'm hearing is that, number one, we need to work on the short-term solutions for the area, sandbagging and whatever we can come up with that will direct the water in the short term. The long term is to find some kind of engineering solutions, and we're working with MassDOT and um, USDA on that, and maybe other people can get involved as well, I'm not sure. Um, uh, and then the, the other thing, sorry, that I wanted to mention is that we, um, the Board of Health is trying to work on something called Neighbors Helping Neighbors. You're talking about emergency help during, um, you know, getting sandbags and stuff during an emergency. Part of the problem with having people come from out of town would be that if it's during an emergency, sometimes it's hard to travel. So I think better if we can find people within town that we can develop a force to do that. Does that make sense? 
I think some of the work is actually, there's some work that for during the emergency, you're correct, that it's better to be as close by as possible. But some of the work is also post-emergency cleanup, you know, that, that is involved. We took many gallons of water out of our basements, and in my case, you know, family from across the state came to help. So, okay. if, and if I could have pulled somebody to hold hoses, <laughs> right. move pumps, um, that was local, but everybody, like, you know, George was working on his problems. Um, you know, that, I think it's both during the emergency and then a post-emergency. Okay, so, I mean, if it's all right with the two of you, I would very much like to um, continue this conversation with both of you offline to kind of move forward. Um, yeah, that's that fine. I, I think you guys need to move on with your meeting, but yeah. I hope we make clear the nature of the problem and well, that we're willing to help however we can. Yeah. I want to go look at I wanted to say, too, that it's not just that area of town that's having yeah. flooding down the hill issues. So I think this is something, as Erica was saying, that we need to look at throughout the entire town. Yeah. Um, yours is very immediate because it's very obvious and right there, but, um, and, you know, Lori, I'd love to call on you for more um, ideas about funding. Okay. And, and uh, you know, but right. the thing that sets that, this area that Lori is talking about it, apart is just the concentration of homes that have lost so much. And, um, and, histor and, historic and their too. historic value. Like they're old, yeah, they're yeah. And you know, it's, it's, town. You know, they're my, old, my, they're myself, homes. my neighbor, and three houses up um, had lost everything in their basement. And just, that's, that can't, that can't keep, that's just, that's just bad. Because um, everybody has their boilers in there, their electric panels, all that stuff. And you just can't have, you can't sustain losses like that and keep a home. Your insurance won't won't keep supporting it. They don't support it at all. <laughs> um, I mean, if it's really just a question of cleaning out culverts, that seems like an easy fix, but it also seems like there's probably some there's engineering to, for yeah. the future. Yeah. Yeah. The story of what was the short, is a great start. The short and the long. Right, exactly. And, and right. There, there are people with historical memory that, you know, I, I, I was told that in the floods of 86, uh, when Main Street was four feet underwater, um, 18? No, not, not 1980. <laughs> that's, <laughs> or 68. It might be 68. Um, but there, w w within the it's latter not part, within the latter part of last century. Uh, well, the, uh, the Baptist Hill Church was taken down in um, 1937, and the last time that the Connecticut River was at these levels was in 1936-37. So that means the same amount of water it was for different reasons. It was ice jams and then a hurricane. So it happened in the winter and then in the fall. But it means that the same amount of water moved through town and it moved through Vermont in the same way. So um, it's a pre and if you even look at the old pictures of where the water went, it's actually quite similar. Okay, I think we're yeah. done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you. Bernie, call us anytime. And I'm easiest when it's like scheduled. That's like Thank you, we'll do. Yeah, that's, gotcha. that's the best. What's the best way to retreat? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you'll be, you, you have to walk past the camera in any way. You've got to crawl on your hands and knees. Um, <laughs> Out the window, out the window. Yeah. Bronnie, do you have anything else to add to this category before we move on? Nope, I'm all good, thank all right. you. All right, um, did we do the warrants already? No. All right, we have to, we have to, the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $153,074.42, payroll warrant in the amount of $104,000. $15.21, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $24,395, and um, special access fund in the amount of $6,830.83. I know we approved those forms, so I looked at them all, they looked fine to me. Second. 
All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. So, and Ronnie, the, the, the spending from the highway department in, these, in this warrant, none of this is the deficit spending yet? This is all just regular budget stuff or is this deficit spending too? Um, I'd be honest, I'd have to look at the codes. I think Mike put them in his 51, but it would be a 5100 in either salary or expenses would be under the um, deficit spending. The overtime, he has a separate code for the overtime and the yeah. materials and that he's tracking. So, because um, I, you know, like I'll, there's big expenses in like diesel fuel and things like that that look like they might have been normally scheduled, um, and lots of lots of material that was probably deficit spending. And but, all right, um, we took a look Honestly, at it. I haven't had a chance to look at it since the words came out to see. All right. Um, Move, seconded. Did we vote? We did. All right. Um, <laughs> this, so the, the uh, on a new business, the vote to sign the order of taking for the estate of Mary Bay and the Salvation Army. Um, I move that we sign that order because we have voted on this many times, and this is what the property of Mary Day and Salvation Army want us to do as right. far as. Um, so all three of these need to be signed? Yeah, they do. Okay, three of the and this, is what, this is what Lori's on the phone for. Oh, she, no, right. um, yeah. Notice the tanking. Lori, are you still there? I'm here. All right. Um, we're getting ready to sign the, these things. Uh, I second Erica's motion. Um, all in favor. And I, I am going to witness your signatures and um, put the stamp on that in the morning. Good, okay. good plan. Um, so. Is there an original set or? Those are the ones I have. We each have, we each, we each have one. We have copies. Usually, of those are all. I, that's the only one I have. Is there an original one? I just took them off of the folder online. So just pick one, just pick one just and pick one. Yeah. Pick yeah. one. Yeah. So this is the final step in the property that we've been in the process of taking for several months now. There's only two here though. One's double sided. One double sided. Okay, find that one. There were three. Yeah, there's one order of taking, which includes them both, and then there's one notice for salvation and one notice for Mary Bay estate. I got one notice, one order. Or is it get dated tonight or to, or tomorrow? Don't date. Go ahead and date it tonight. That's when you're signing it. We signed them all. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Lori. You're welcome. Bye bye. See you. Um, discussion and vote to sign a contract with the Panther Mills to remove trees from the South River. So, this is Conservation Commission. Acting on a complaint by an adjoining landowner um, that felt trees needed to be removed from the river. Then investigated and found it to be a potential hazard in the river and 
also found that they had fallen from the property that you just signed the order of taking for. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah. is on the Bay property. Yeah. Oh, really? exactly. Is this the former Bay property? Yeah, it's right. It's right. Yeah, no, I know where it is. Like across from um, Emerson Hollow. I think the quote's actually extremely reasonable. I'm just confused by the separation of the last line, and it's starting by saying, "It is our hope." It is what? It is our hope to then pull the stumps back into place. It's not stating they will do that. It's their hope that they'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's a lump sum charge. I'm just confused by it. I have to say, I have. Um, contact with the panther males many times for tree removal mm -hmm. on their property. Mm -hmm. And if they say they hope they can do something, they they'll do it. Definitely can. I mean it's a really <laughs> I mean, it's actually extremely <laughs> reasonable quote for the work they're yeah, doing. Yeah, that's my feeling about the panther males. Um, but I you know, it's always just been very verbal, all of my transactions with them, so I didn't even think anything of that, but good catch. Mm -hmm. I mean I, I was in the Descending voice, and I mean, I, I looked at the, where the trees are. It's, it's, you can just see them. I didn't. Yeah, the, you don't want them there, um, and yeah, they're possibly, they're probably a potential danger. Um, but <clears throat> on the grand list of like urgent things to deal with, I wouldn't have put that. This that's actually the first thing that we're voting to spend special money on. Are they look, blocking the flow of water? No. Um, they're actually in the river, and they were, and our, they were concerned, especially in the winter, with it freezing, that it would make a huge dam. So, yeah. and part of what was written in there about we hope at the end, I think the problem is that the bank is very unstabilized because of the trees coming down, and so what they're hoping to do is restabilize the bank. Oh, I see. oh that one photo, the two last the two the. Last photos, you can see that. Is this this is just going to come out of free cash, or like where does this come from, Barry? Well, it'll be a deficit spending. We did um, get this quote in time to put it on our initial damage assessment. Okay, so it'll be part of. All right. Okay. Yep. I mean, this is one yep. of those things that we hope to be reimbursed for. But it seems like it needs to be done. I th this seems very reasonable to me, honestly. Yeah, no, it, it did seem reasonable, and it seems like it's necessary. If I just question the number one, this is like the number one thing that we're doing in a specific thing. But Low hanging okay. fruit. Low hanging fruit, there you go. Um, yeah, so um, I'll move to sign the contract with Panther Mill. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we are the customer for customer signature, right? Yes. You are the customer. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe certificate there as well, which you might want to vote to allow Phil to sign on behalf of the town. The WPA certificate? It's through the, the ComCom? I think that, um, if it wasn't in the packet, that's my fault, but I thought it was. Yeah, the, cer the certificate, yeah. it's a cert certification? Oh, the, yeah. The certification form? I yeah. didn't see a spot for the select board to sign. I think it just spelled certified to be an emergency by the issuing authority, and it's signed Grace Larson. Okay, there wasn't a spot up at the top that said that it was from the town. Sorry, maybe I misremembered. I thought we had to sign off on that as well from the town. I don't see it. No, it doesn't seem. I mean, I think just that. All right. I mean, if it's necessary, you want us to vote it just in case? So we really did vote it though to sign yeah. the contract. It's necessary. You, you really it. have because yeah, yeah because so you already voted to do the work. So all right. Um, so um, vote to appoint Ed Zanuski as traffic control officer. Anybody have any objections? No objections. No. All right. Move to approve. Second. 
Denise Gee as traffic control officer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, re there's a recommendation to, to appoint John Pelletier as representative to, the, to uh, Franklin Tech. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion is approved. Um, that's for a term ending June 30th, 2024. For the tech school. And um, okay, so that's that's uh, items not anticipated 24 hours or 48 hours. Anybody? Meetings attended by select board members. We've already talked about a lot. Uh, one other thing I spent, I was at the four o'clock meeting with um, ConCom and the Conway Swimming Pool. The Conway Swimming Pool needs help. Um, that thing is wrecked. Yeah, I saw. Uh, and so we talked about a couple different things. Um, you know, Con 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 uh, Conservation Commission is going to recommend giving them a 30-day emergency certificate to do the dredging of some of the silt, etc. But um, if you were, uh, well, I don't know how many years ago did they come before the select board asking for? Um, uh, it was for the. Board of meeting as the board of trustees asking for money from the Germain Fund to used, do yeah, for handicapped Germain access. Yeah. Um, that handicapped access was wrecked. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so didn't we use CPA funds for the? They they that the, was that was part of it too. Yeah. But um, specific since we do have a trust, there is a trust that like can specifically and only be used for um, handi the handicapped children of Conway. Mm -hmm. um, I, I encourage them to take a look at that and see whether that's worth applying for it again. So, um, but they're also in the running for the conservation service, doing services for it, um, and we're, we also have them on the list of damages that mainly with, yeah. with the appropriation from the state if that ever comes. Um, but they're going to need help, and so that they might be before us in two weeks um, to talk about that. And we all attended the Deerfield yes. board meeting. Yes, we had a, a, a joint meeting last Wednesday with the Deerfield Select Board. They were generous with their time, and, um, and uh, that was a good good write up the next day in the recorder about that. And yeah, there was, um, but we you know we've all been doing a lot, and so. Hopefully, hopefully it'll pay off. This is one of those things where you just got to keep on knocking on lots of doors before you get somebody that's going to open it and let you in, you know. This is one of those. And we'll keep trying because there's a lot of groups that have that can help. We just got to get one of them to say yes. And um, so far, MassDOT has been our patron saint. Mm -hmm. they've, they've done really good stuff for us. Pay for this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Veronica, did you have an update? Did it not get emailed to you? I read it. I didn't oh, see good. it. Oh, good. Okay. I didn't see it. I, I, I didn't, but it's fine. I'd request permission to not read it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a good like, idea. You sound like you have COVID. <laughs> I did just want to update, though, that, um, excuse me, Ron is, and the highway crew are working on Adams Road. The culverts are already installed, and they're working. He's worked through the entire weekend. He's doing his best to get that open as quickly as possible so the homes are accessible to emergency services. Yeah, they've been doing a great job. Um, thank you also, Veronique, about meetings. The day after our last select board meeting, I met with Ron and Veronique in the office just to go over a game plan and um, what roads we were going to ask MassDOT for more help on, uh, how far we would go for the repairs, um, you know, tracking spending, everything like that. So, um, Veronique, thank you. You did a great job on that and uh, pressing MassDOT. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get the unmute button. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you this is this is an amazing um, experience to have everybody pulling together trying to make things happen. And I am so appreciative when people come to me with ideas 
and places to go to look for help. Um, I definitely encourage anybody out there who's listening to call me up if there are more places that you think I can tap into. Yeah, Lori Block was amazing. She's really, really smart. Um, and like super well accomplished too. Um, but uh, when, when she sinks her teeth into something, just go with that. That's my, that's my advice. Um, Let's get her to run for select board. <laughs> I would try, tried to offer her, like we should have just made her a subcommittee, like a subcommittee of one. Yeah, does she want to like join us? Yeah, can we, we do that? Can we make can we make someone like Lori a subcommittee? Just appoint her to do. Emergency. Yeah, <laughs> an emergency subcommittee for a work group. additional yeah work group. Emergency work group. We gotta ask Donna we, whether we can just de designate a private citizen like that, with no. If we can do that for mass and motion, yeah. we should be able to do that for. Well, you also did it with Joe for the. That's um, right. That's right, for the, yeah. sewer, the sewer rats. Right, so, um, but you might want to speak with her and get a, like a mandate first. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we could use her for, I, yeah, I thought that deer, the Deerfield um, joint meeting was, you know, a great meeting. And all of the um, suggestions that they offered, I wrote everything down. There's a lot as far as, right. as, as where to go for funding with state and national is maybe we can gather all of that on a chart and have a, you know, designate a person for each one and then have her kind of oversee the whole thing to make sure that, you know, we work with the Watershed Protection Act, the, um, what did they say, use the Conservation District as a sponsor, the BRIC grant, the Hazardous Mitigation Grant, right? culverts through the MVP program, um, what she was talking about, about working with the highway department on biofiber tech for stabilizing the gravel roads, all that stuff. I think she'd be great for something like that. Yeah. Nominated. Uh, I, don't know what for I concur. I, do, I should also point out that there are two open seats still on the sustainability committee. That might also be a place. Yeah. Um, Sending out her contact uh, to Erica, Chris, awesome. Thank you. and yeah, Bernie. Be in touch. And it's just her son. Um, all right, so, uh, all right, so our next meeting is August 28th at 6 o'clock. May I request that we add? Um, Payment of street lights in our town to a discussion on uh, our next meeting. Mm. Yeah, sure. Sure. Did you get that, Bernie? Or oh, Adam's writing it down. Yes, and actually, I've um, been in contact with some, um, one of the towns and their whole research on street lights. So, um, Good. Chris, if you want, maybe you and I in the meantime could talk about the information that they've found. Awesome. Great. Right. Yeah. But, when we were looking at the warrants tonight, we saw that the monthly bill for streetlights is up to almost 2000 or 1500 or something. So, 1700 Right. And a lot of local towns are talking about both switching to LED and or purchasing the poles outright so the town owns mm -hmm. them. So those are things we could look into for sure. Yeah. Well, that means we're spending like 13000 14000 a year on streetlights. And I'm still asking around about uh, designating a dark community, dark sky community, because there is funding there. I just don't know how to do it. Good, I'm all for that too. Yeah, our whole town could be dark sky. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'll um, move to adjourn to the 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're adjourned.